So this video is going to be a little talky, mostly because although the process is uh, actually really simple, in terms of time it's a little involved. So I'll walk you through the steps and you can uh, proceed how you want to. Now what we're making here is a graffiti coated sand and it's used mostly for water purification. Um, there's been quite a few tests on graffiti coated sand and it does really well at removing things like um, pathogens and organic substances and some metals, arsenics I believe. Now it's actually stunningly easy to make and you only really need two ingredients and that is sugar and sand. Now this is ordinary builder's sand. Um, I got this down at B&Q. Um, I guess you could go and dig it from a river if you want, or go and take it from the beach or something like that, but it's just ordinary soft sand. Give it a wash to remove any salts or residual clays that are in there. Um, let it separate out, pour off all the water, because the sand sinks very quickly and all the residual stuff stays in the water, and you give it a wash a few times until you get it nice and clean. So we use sand and sugar, just normal table sugar. This is um, from the local supermarket. Now, the amount of graphene coating that you give to this sand is going to depend on the amount of sugar that you put into the water, and you can change that and play around with it until you get a carbon loading that you're quite happy with. So you can do a whole series of little experiments where you do 100 grams of each, progressively increasing the carbon loading until you get one that actually has a good result for you. Now, most of them um, actually have a fairly reasonable result, but if you want to fine-tune it, that would be the way to go around it. So, um, measure your volume of water, or where your volume of water, and uh, where your volume of sugar, and just add it. Now, I'm not going to bother, because, as I say, it's only a quick demonstration of something you've already done. So, you just add the sugar, and stir it up until it's dissolved. Now, with your sand, you need to put it into some kind of container, pour your sugar on, and make sure that it's really well mixed. Now the first stage of making this sand is to heat it, and you, heat, you need to heat it to around about 90 degrees or so, and stir it constantly, which is actually a bit of a drag. Um, I use this thing, which is just a slow cooker. So, you put your sand into the slow cooker, add your sugar water solution, turn it on and stir it, it will evenly coat the sugar onto the sand and dry it at the same time. Now it takes about six hours to do that, and I do it by hand because I can't be bothered buying a stirring machine, but a stirring machine would be really easy to add onto that. Now, after six hours, what you actually get out is a black carbon-covered sand, which is the stuff. So you get out this black carbon-covered sand. Now, what you need to do with that is heat it and you need to raise the temperature to 200 degrees centigrade and you need to do that slowly over about one hour. The reason you need to do it like that is that as the temperature approaches 186, which is the caramelization point of sugar, it begins to flow over the sugar grain, uh, over the sand grains, sorry. Uh, and if you don't do it slowly, then it'll all just burn and be in clumps. So you do it slowly. You pop it in the oven and uh, raise the temperature by a few degrees, give it a few minutes, pull it out, stir it, pop it back in, raise the temperature by a few degrees, pull it out, stir it, and so on. And you can do this in a normal domestic oven, if you want, or you can do it in a kiln equipped with a stirrer. I did this stage in a normal domestic oven. Now, by the time it's um, got to 200 degrees, and you need to take about an hour to do that, you then just leave it at 200 degrees for another hour, which ensures, ensures the kind of full caramelization and burn off until you get the carbon coated sand. Now, silicon dioxide, which is predominantly what sand is, has a catalytic effect with carbon. It will actually turn it into graphite, but only at a high temperature. And unfortunately for the next stage, what you're going to need is some kind of furnace or kiln that can reach 750 degrees centigrade. Now, most hobby kilns will do this. I happen to have a potter's kiln that will get to 1200 degrees, and so it's not really a challenge. But if you don't have a kiln that can do that, then you're not going to be able to make this because you need to do that next stage. And in that next stage, all you do is add your um, carbon coated sand into a stainless steel container and you need to cover it with this stuff. This is activated carbon. What this does is creates an inert atmosphere. So you pop your sand into your vessel, you put some, like, some kind of separator in there, uh, a piece of paper will do actually, and then pour a whole load of this on the top because you're meant to do it in a nitrogen atmosphere, a non-reducing atmosphere, and of course a nitrogen atmosphere isn't too easy to do. So if you cover it with a bit of paper and then activated carbon, you'll get a non-reducing atmosphere. 
Now, you raise it um, from 200 to 750 degrees centigrade over about an hour again. And you leave it at 750 degrees centigrade for three hours. And at the end of that three hour period, you're going to get graphene coated sand because the silicon dioxide catalyzes the carbon into graphene and that's what you get. Now, you're not quite ready, but you're almost ready to turn this into a water filter. The final stage of this is to activate it. Now, in order to activate it, what you do is add concentrated sulfuric acid. That's 96 to 98% sulfuric acid. Then the ratio is roughly 5 grams of this to 100 millilitres of acid. So you add it to the acid and then um, leave it to soak for about 30 minutes. And it's a standard activation process, incidentally, the same that they use for activated carbon. Uh, leave it to soak for about 30 minutes, pour off the excess acid, and then try it to 120 degrees for about an hour until it's dry. Once you've done that, what you've got is ultrasound, and that's the stuff that you can use as a filter. So, there is a method for making ultrasound from just builder sand and normal sugar, and that's all it takes to do it. So, if you feel like having a play with that, feel free.